Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this general problem, they tell us that scientists have studied two species of sand lizards, the Mojave fringe toe lizard and the western zebra tail lizard, and that they want to understand the different structures of their toes in reference to their habitat. They give us this simplified velocity versus time graph for the Mojave fringe toe lizard, and they ask us three things. We have to figure out an estimation for the maximum acceleration of the lizard, and they need it in meters per second squared and in Gs. We need to find an estimation of the acceleration at time of 150 milliseconds. And then lastly, of course, we need to figure out what is an estimate of how far it went in the first 50 milliseconds. In part A, we have the velocity versus time graph. And if you remember what we've talked about in a lot of the other videos, is that to get an acceleration from that, we're going to use the slope. The definition of a slope is a change in the rise over the change in the run. And the rise in this case is meters per second. The run in this case is a change in time. So the change in velocity over a change in time, that's why the slope gives us acceleration because we just defined the acceleration formula. So the steepest slope is going to be here at the beginning. If we draw tangent lines like this, like that, and like that, you can see the one that has the highest slope is near the beginning. So since it's just an estimate, what we'll be doing is we'll take the acceleration from right here at 50 milliseconds and at the beginning at zero, and we'll average that. If we get the slope of that line, you can see it's essentially the same. Delta anything is always final minus initial, so we have V final minus V initial divided by T final minus T initial. So the final velocity, we can estimate it's basically like 0.8 something, yeah, 0.8, 0.9, we'll go with 0.8. So 0 0.8 meters per second minus the beginning, which is zero meters per second. We'll divide that by the times, which we have milliseconds, but we want standard units of seconds so that we will get the correct units output. So we have 50 milliseconds, but 50 is another way of saying it 10 times the negative three seconds minus zero times 10 to the negative three seconds. So 0.8 divided by 50 times 10 to the negative three. So that gives us an estimation of the maximum acceleration of 16 meters per second squared. And now in the question, they also ask us to give the maximum acceleration in both meters per second squared and in Gs. So what we'll do is we'll take our value here 16 meters per second squared, and then we'll take that and divide it by G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. 16 divided by 9.8 gives us 1.63 or 1.6 Gs. It makes sense as well because what's happening is 9.8 is essentially 10. So whenever you divide something by G, you're essentially within rounding distance of just moving the decimal place over. So 1.6 Gs and 16 meters per second squared for part A. Moving on to part B, they want us to give an estimation of the acceleration at a time of 150 milliseconds. We'll do the same thing. So right here at 50, the velocity is probably 1.6 or something. We're going to use the same principles down here though, and we'll take it from 100 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds, because that is an average, roughly the same of what the tangent line would be at that point anyways. So the same thing, the final velocity we'll say is 1.8 meters per second minus the velocity there, uh, let's 1.3. You might look at the graph and say slightly different numbers, but again, it's an estimation. And I always encourage you with these ones to use your specific numbers and your specific graph. It might be slightly different for everybody's. They do that a lot of the times on purpose, so you can't just plug in, you know, answers that you find on the internet. So the time we said is 200 times 10 to the negative 3 minus 100 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds and seconds, 1.8 minus 1.3 divided by 200 minus 100 is going to be 100 times 10 to the negative three. So we have an estimation for the acceleration at the time of 150 at five meters per second squared.
And lastly, for part C, they want us to estimate how far the lizard traveled in the first 50 milliseconds. So now since we're going from velocity to distance, we need to find the area underneath the curve. So right here, this whole chunk, we need to estimate what that area is, and that will tell us the distance from a velocity versus a time graph. So you can see it's kind of like a triangle. So we'll use the triangle formula for area, which is one half times the base times the height. So we have one half and the base in this case is 50 milliseconds. So 50 times 10 to the negative three seconds. And the height we can estimate like before is 0 0.8 meters per second. So in this case, we have seconds times meters over seconds. So we have seconds over one times meters over seconds. The seconds will cancel, leaving us with meters over one. So meters is what we need because we need a distance. So we have 0.5 times 50 times 10 to the negative three times 0 0.8. So that gives us 0 0.02 meters. And that is the same as saying one, two, two centimeters. So however mastering physics wants you to give the answer, either in meters or in centimeters, look closely at that so you don't get it wrong over something like that. But it's either 0 0.02 meters or two centimeters and five meters per second squared at 150 milliseconds and 16 meters per second squared for the maximum acceleration of the lizard.